Now let's talk about slow second step reaction mechanisms. And uh, so for the reaction, 2NO plus O2 goes to 2NO2 gas. Uh, the experimentally determined rate law is K times the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of O2. Um, and this has three molecules is reactant and is tempting to hypothesize an elementary reaction step that mirrors the rate law. For example, we could do step one. Turn into the back play. Step one is going to be uh, NO plus NO plus O2 goes to NO2 plus NO2. We write the rate law and it's going to be rate equals K times concentration of NO squared times concentration of O2. Boom. Done. You've got the step one. Right? I keep it simple. Step one does match the overall reaction. The rate law. Boom. Yes. Also, uh, so this is a good hypothesis. So let's say this, this is a good reaction mechanism. But good reaction mechanisms don't have to be correct. Um, so uh, this would involve a, a hypothesis in which three molecules are colliding simultaneously. That would be is what's called a termolecular reaction step involving a termolecular collision with three molecules an event that occurs approximately one million times less frequently than a collision of two molecules, or a bimolecular collision, which ends up with a bimolecular uh, step in a reaction mechanism. Plus, they all have to collide in the proper orientation and with enough energy to react. So our conclusion that I'm stating to you is that true term molecular reactions are very rare. They have been found to be true, but not for us. Not in general, anyway. So it's so much more common than a term molecular reaction mechanism is a slow second step reaction mechanism. And I've written out the mechanism here. Um, I've written step one is fast. And when I say that step one is fast, what I mean is that step one is going to be at equilibrium. And uh, so step one fast is going to be at equilibrium. And we're going to talk more about equilibrium in upcoming lectures. But at uh, equilibrium, so uh, the reaction is over or complete. And uh, so let's see, for the forward arrow, which is down here, we're going to call it K1. And for the reverse arrow, which is for the reverse reaction, we're going to call it K minus 1. And so uh, K1 is for the forward reaction, or for step 1 forward reaction. And Therefore, step one, because it's fast, is going to have two rate laws, right? Because both reactions are happening. It's going to have a forward rate law. It's going to have a reverse rate law. So forward. It's going to be uh, rate equals K sub one, uh, NO squared, because those are the reactants. So the reverse rate is going to be equal to K to the minus 1 times N2O2 just to the first power. Okay. Getting crazy, I know. But um, so then step 2 is going to be the slow step. And in step 2, uh, I've written it with arrows there, but step two only has a forward part because it's slow, 
and it only proceeds from reactants to products. The rate of reverse reaction will be found to be negligible. Forward rate is going to be K2 times N2O2 times O2. There we go. And according to this, according to our idea that the slow uh, step determines the rate law, then this must be the rate law for our reaction. And I will point out to you that this rate law has an intermediate in it. An intermediate. I think it keeps thinking my M's are squiggles and canceling them out. Um, okay, so remember, so this is weird, I know, but uh, we've got uh, to still have our reaction add up to our overall reaction. So let's check that. So we've got NO plus NO plus O2. We've got N2O2 canceling out. We end up with overall. So NO, 2NO plus O2 goes to 2NO2. So yay, that matches. But back. we've got, we don't see our rate here and a rate here matching. However, as it says right here, N2O2 is an intermediate, and we always eliminate reaction intermediates from the mechanism rate law. And that let me show you how to do that next. Okay? So solving for the rate law associated with this mechanism. So the first step is fast. So the first step is at equilibrium. And when we talk about equilibrium, equilibrium is going to be found to be the state at which the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. And we have rates for the forward. We have rates for the forward and reverse reaction for step one. And we're going to set them equal to each other. So rate of forward reaction, let's say rate of forward is rate equals K1 times concentration of NO squared. And rate of reverse reaction is K to the minus one. Just to the first power. So what's in blue is equal to the statement right here. And we'll talk more about this. But for now, equilibrium means rate of forward reaction equals rate of reverse reaction. And we've just done that based on a reaction mechanism from the previous page. And now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for concentration of N2O2 and plug into um, the uh, slow rate. So when I say that, I'm going to just put concentration of N2O2. I'm going to bring, it's going to be K1 times NO2 over k to the minus one. Wait a minute, something's missing here. That there is a squared here. I apologize. Squared, squared. Oop. Squared. There we go. So that squared is there. Um, solve for uh, concentration of N2O2 and plug into the slow rate. Uh, so that's our rate determining step. And so we come back here. Now our slow rate is going to be for step two. Rate equals K2 
that too. Rate equals K2, N2, O2, times O2. Concentration. And now we can take this red statement here, plug it in right there, and we get rate equals K2 times K1 NO2 squared over K minus 1 O2. And it may look like we're not done, but good news, we've got, <laughs> good news. Um, we've got, let's see if this works. We've got NO2 squared, we've got O2, and that is what our experimentally determined rate law was. And here we've just got 1K. And here we've got 3Ks. So what we're going to do is we're going to define that little k equals k2 times k1 over k to the minus 1. And we can rewrite this last part here. Rate equals k, right, this k here, times NO2 squared times O2. And um, now this matches the experimentally determined rate law. And because we are so happy about that, please draw a smiley face right next to uh, that matches the experimentally determined rate law on your lecture note. Uh, and uh, so what did we get from this slow second step? Well, we learned that the first step was at equilibrium, and we learned what that means, and we'll talk more about that. We also learned that term molecular reaction steps are never the answer because there's just not enough times that three molecules collide. And my demonstration of three molecules colliding is going to be oop, <laughs> my foot and my two hands uh, coming together. Uh, that used to be a lot easier when I was younger and uh, didn't have to stretch before doing that. Uh, so slow second step allow you to come up with Three reactant, three molecules in the rate law. Bottom line. Now, uh, a second example: ozone to oxygen reaction mechanism. This is the actual reaction mechanism. Um, we in previously we just hypothesized a made up one. It was not correct to give you an example, but this is um, actually ozone. Uh, how it reacts in the upper atmosphere. And uh, we've got overall reaction, and we've got, right, we've got the two things we need to hypothesize a reaction mechanism. We've got the overall reaction, and we've got the experimentally determined rate law. And this time, the experimentally determined rate law has something in the denominator, a sure sign that things are crazy, that we're going to have a slow second step. The uh, suggested reaction mechanism, uh, which we very nicely supplied for me and for you, is that there's a step one fast, that ozone reacts to form O2 plus O. Oh, this is the same reaction mechanism. We've just put it in as fast versus slow, which we did at the opposite before. So this is going to be the correct reaction mechanism um, because it's got the, uh, for this, Experimentally determined rate law. So for the first one, we've got, uh, let's see. So this is going to be the forward reaction. So this is going to be K sub 1, K sub 1. This is going to be K sub minus 1 for the reversed reaction. So rate forward is going to be K1 oh, equals K1 times ozone. Right, reverse 
K minus one times O2 times O. And for the slow, se slow second step, we should just write a forward arrow, and that will be forward rate equals uh, K2 times O times O3. And uh, now let's go ahead and do our trick where we take and we say, uh, oh, let me add up to make sure that it adds up to the reaction. We've got an O that it will end up canceling out. We've got 203 goes to 302. Yes, that part is good. And now let's see if I got another page here. Good. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing we did before. We're going to set these two rates here equal to each other. So K1 times O3. So first step, add equilibrium. So rate forward equals rate reverse. And rate forward is K1 times concentration of O3 equals K minus 1 times concentration of O2 times O. We will now solve for concentration of our intermediate. Since our intermediate doesn't necessarily exist, we're only hypothesizing it, part of this process. Uh, and that's going to be O equals K1 times ozone, O3, over K minus 1 times O2. Now we get something in the denominator, which is what we're going to end up looking for. And the next... Uh, and I think the last step is to plug in to a uh, slow second step rate law. And our slow second step rate law is right there. Rate equals K2 times O times O3. And we have an expression for O that we can plug in. Which, in the end, got one more color in here, back to black. We've got three Ks here, which just becomes K. And we've got O3 squared over O2. And that matches our experimentally determined rate law right here. So uh, now we've shown a second example of a re reaction mechanism with a slow second step, this time that causes something to be in the denominator of the rate law, which is pretty cool.